So I'm with Jeff Gadway with RIM. Jeff, what's your position there? I'm a senior manager in the product marketing group. Okay. And Jeff's going to give us a demonstration of the BlackBerry 10, all its features. And Jeff started out by finding out my website, the Voice on the Web website, and how it works with responsive design. So we know that uh, the BlackBerry 10 works with responsive design, if nothing else, and the HTML5. Go ahead. All right. So um, we're here in the browser. I just wanted to pull this up um, and pull up your website just to show you just um, you know how... Uh, how responsive uh, the BlackBerry 10 browser is. Um, if I reorient here, you'll see that um, it's going to change orientation very quickly. Um, and uh, you've got uh, really great page browsing. If I go into uh, an article, um, we've got um, Boy, that's fast. Yeah, a really fast browser and a, a really great reader uh, view as well. So um, you can get a, a cleaner view of your web pages. Um, really nice, really slick. Um, but really, I wanted to use whoops, I wanted to use the browser as a starting point um, to show you uh, some of the new gestures and the way that you interact with the BlackBerry 10 uh, operating system. So if I want to minimize this application back to um, my running apps, I can just swipe up from the bottom of the screen. Now this keeps the, uh, the application running, so this is a true multitasking UI. I can have multiple apps running simultaneously. I've got my calendar open here. I've got um, the, the browser, obviously, I've got BBM weather app as well. And you'll probably also notice that as I minimize an application, what appears on um, the active frame is actually dynamic. So it's reformatting the content um, to show you some useful information. So in the, in, in the instance of the calendar, I see you know, where I need to be right now and where I need to be next. So I don't even need to go into the application in order to get the information that I need. Where's the calendar? Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, sitting to the right of your running apps, you've got um, your more traditional application icon grid. I can navigate through those pages very quickly just by sliding along at the bottom here. Right? Or if I know the page I need to get to, I can just touch on it and get okay. to it very quickly. So it's a fairly traditional jump between screens. Yeah, but we do have this really nice, if you look at the way that the pages blend together, yes. um, it's a very nice layering. Um, yeah. Just really beautiful. Now, sitting to the left of my running applications is something that we call the BlackBerry Hub. And now we were having a discussion about this a little bit earlier. The BlackBerry Hub is something that's always running. It's not an app. You, you'll see there isn't a mail or messages icon in the app grid because the BlackBerry Hub is something that is always open and it's always just beneath the surface. Now what's great about the BlackBerry Hub is that it's accessible from any application. So if I'm browsing a web page or watching a video, I can actually take a look into the Hub to see what's happening. So if um, I get a message or I get a notification uh, saying that something's come in, I can take a quick look into the Hub, see what's just come in, and make a decision as to whether or not I can return back to what I was doing or whether I should go into the Hub and address that thing right away. Now here within the BlackBerry Hub, I have access to all my different accounts, so personal professional email, um, my work email that might be on my, my, um, my work server as well as my personal email accounts. Um, I've got social networks like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, you see just how quickly um, the Hub will filter and, and um, allow me to, uh, to, to get at the information that I need. Um, but what's really neat about the Hub as well is that it's about time-sensitive information. So if you're swiping down in, the, in the, uh, the Hub, these are things that have happened in the past, right? This is, right. This is something that we're all very familiar with. Mm -hmm. So it would only make sense then that by swiping, by swiping up, I can look at what's next, right? So I see that um, right now I have actually two conflicting meetings um, and in two hours and 42 minutes I've got, um, I've got uh, a team dinner. Now this is not um, a traditional way of, of portraying this information. Um, I mean what we're doing is allowing you to just look uh, a little bit if you want to see just what is immediately coming up or I can continue to pull to reveal more. And um, you know, similarly, it shows you uh, how much time you have until that next meeting. So a lot of traditional calendars would only tell you the time of the meeting or it would tell you the duration of the appointment. But for us, for our customers, we know that they're very aware of, uh, of their time. Time is their most precious commodity. And so we want to allow them to quickly see how much time do I have before that next meeting. 
Now I can select that particular meeting, um, get your traditional details about it, so where it is, when it is, uh, I've got a reminder there, but I can also tap on people view. And this allows me to see who's going to be in that appointment, who I'm going to be interacting with. I can go a step further and uh, dive in to get information about those people from across all of their social networks. This is similar to what you get on the playbook, right? It is, but it's evolved even further. Yeah. Um, what you're able to do with this, now if I wasn't following Alex uh, on Twitter or I wasn't friends with him on Facebook, it would still recognize that he had a Facebook account and I could select um, send a friend request. Oops. Now I've launched uh, the Facebook app, but um, uh, the point I was going to make was actually that um, you don't need to launch the Facebook app or the Twitter app to be able to get updates um, from those services on that person. So when I click updates, what it's going to do is go out and scan the web and find um, Alex's most recent um, tweets, Facebook updates, um, as well as uh, any information about uh, his company or his industry. So this is a very powerful tool, whether you're using it um, to catch up on a friend that maybe you haven't seen in a while, or you're using it as a CRM tool uh, about to walk into a sales meeting and you want to catch up on your, on your customer. So that's the BlackBerry Hub. Let me turn quickly to uh, the BlackBerry Keyboard. Um, we've really been focused on delivering a fast and accurate keyboard experience on BlackBerry 10 um, that uh, you know, lives up to BlackBerry's DNA uh, for keyboards. Now, the keyboard, it looks very much like a BlackBerry keyboard, complete with those frets that help you organize the rows of keys and make um, touch typing that much more accurate. But as I start to type, you'll notice that I actually get um, suggestions that appear in the keys. Now the reason that we've um, put the suggestions in the keys as opposed to in a more traditional suggestion bar atop the keyboard is because we are trying to eliminate the think point that exists when you have to change your eye position from the keyboard to the suggestion bar. So by putting the word that you're looking for uh, where your eyes and your fingers are headed next, you're able to actually um, get to that word much more quickly. And then to select that word, I just flick it into place. It's like a little mm -hmm. flicking gesture with your thumb. So I can actually compose a complete thought um, just with a couple flicks of my thumb. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to finish that thought. I can say, looking forward to seeing everyone later. I want to put in punctuation. I just swipe down on the keyboard to toggle to my symbols. Sorry, do that again? Right. So I can toggle through my different pages of symbols oh, okay. just by swiping down. So once again, you, know, you don't have to have a second hand to be able to use this product. Now one of the things I noticed on the playbook is the fact if you hold down the shift key, you get all caps. You can, set, can you do that here too? Absolutely. So now I'm in caps mode and I can say um, here at uh, CES. Okay. So that's the BlackBerry keyboard and we've gotten great feedback from our customers on that. Um, let me take you in and show you um, something that we're calling Time Shift. This is a pretty cool new feature um, which allows you to take great photos uh, the first time every time. Now, I'm going to try to angle this in such a way that um, we can see us both and still be seen through the camera here. And now I'm going to snap a shot. I think your face was a little bit, uh, a little bit um, obstructed, but for my shot, I'm actually able to select that photo and go forwards and backwards in time. Maybe get myself when my mouth isn't open. There we go. And choose a better moment for that photo. And I can hit save and it, uh, it is going to save that shot as a corrected photo. Now one last thing to show you um, builds on uh, BlackBerry's DNA for security. BlackBerry's always been um, a, a platform that enables um, really good security, and that's why it's trusted by you know, enterprises and governments all over the world. Um, with BlackBerry 10, what we're doing is um, allowing a user to have both a personal and a work profile on the phone. So this is truly um, a dual persona device here. When I select work, I get um, a new wallpaper, and this is being deployed by my IT administrator. I have a different series of applications, so you'll see that I no longer have access to Facebook and Twitter from the work side. And that's because my IT administrator has said, we don't want you tweeting while you're in work mode. 
And then lastly, um, applications are going to behave differently when they're open from the work side. So for example, if I was to go into um, the pictures application from the work side, you're going to see that actually I don't have uh, any photos saved. But if I was to switch back to the personal side and open the pictures application, I've got a couple shots here just that I've taken um, throughout the course of today, but I can actually have both of those applications running simultaneously, mm -hmm. both in work and in personal. And what's, uh, what's so great about this is that um, the work side of the phone is not able to access any of the content that lives on the personal side. So these two spaces are secured right down to the deepest layers of the product. So. Uh, as an end user of BlackBerry 10, you can, uh, you can feel confident that your personal and private information is indeed going to remain personal and private. But there's nothing to stop you while you're at work going over to the personal side and looking at Facebook, for instance. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. I mean... Um, but at the same time, you're not using any corporate resources precisely. to support Facebook. That's right. So if I was to uh, go over to the personal side and load Facebook, um, you'll see that. Well, uh, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to. Um, well, I can try to add a photo. Um, if I choose from uh, gallery, I can choose from those two photos. But I wouldn't be able to access any content that lives on the work side right. of the device to post. So I think um, you know. Just to conclude, what I'll show you is uh, I can. Whoops. What I was going to do was um, go back to the uh, go back to the lock screen and just show you how, at the end of the day, you can put BlackBerry 10 to sleep, um, put it into uh, bedside mode um, for uh, for uh, use the next day. Very interesting. What what have you found generally in response to this? I mean, I almost see two different groups. Hmm. One is previous BlackBerry owners. I think there's a very loyal customer base there that's ready to roll and mm. buy as soon as they come mm. out. Mm. How is it being perceived, say, when carrier customers come up and say, okay, my contract's expired, I need a new device? Mm. Um, what do you find are your selling points there? Well, I think the biggest selling point is the new user experience. Um, what we're hearing from customers is that they're looking for a faster way to accomplish tasks, a faster way to get things done, um, less in and out, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, many of the other platforms in the market today uh, require you to go in and out of multiple apps to complete a certain task, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a personal task or a professional task. And um, that's not the way that we operate as humans, right? We, we follow a train of thought. One thing naturally needs, leads to the next. And um, that in and out paradigm doesn't lend itself well to um, following your train of thought. So um, customers are really liking the new user experience. So things like um, you know the hub and peak and flow. Right. Um, these are all things that uh, that that they really find um, that they really find compelling. Um, I think that another thing that we're hearing really good feedback on are some of the table stakes, some of the things that um, you know. All smartphone customers are looking for things like the browser, things like um, the app storefront, um, things like the the touch experience. So, browser, for instance, um, and you saw it in the, in the demo. We've got a great browser on BlackBerry 10. If you look at some of the benchmarks that are out there, whether it's HTML5 test or Ring One test, uh, the BlackBerry 10 browser is really leading the pack across both mobile and desktop browsers. So, customers will be able to. Um, you know, feel confident that by choosing BlackBerry, they're going to get a great web browsing experience. You just came out with BBM Voice on BlackBerry Messenger on the legacy devices. Uh, I assume that will carry across to the BlackBerry 10? Well, you're going to have to wait and see. There's a few things um, that we haven't talked about yet. Yeah. Um, we have said that we're continuing to innovate on BBM. BBM is a, a, a key part of, um, of you know, our, uh, our, our, our experience, um, but I'd stay tuned uh, for some more details uh, on January 30th. And I've also had good experience with the playbook video chat and a couple of calls. So, anyways, we'll see what comes out.